good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are connecting from. My name is Sagnik Datta. I am part of the Citrix Ready technical marketing team managing the desktop ecosystem. I will be your host for today's webinar where we have extra hop with us. Let me welcome you all to the Citrix Ready technical webinar series where we showcase how Citrix and our partners have integrated to deliver valuable products and solutions to common problems faced by our customers. Along with me, I have the main speakers, Eric Thomas, Senior Manager and Solution Architect team in Extra Hop, and John Smith, Solution Architect and Citrix Technology Professional Extra Hop. Well, to introduce a bit of Citrix Ready, Citrix Ready is an end-to-end -end technology partner program that showcases and recommends third-party products, solutions, and services that demonstrate compatibility with Citrix products. Customers can quickly and easily find solutions recommended by Citrix in the Citrix Ready marketplace. Just navigate to the link which we'll share later on the slide deck at citrix.com slash ready. And if you're interested to know more about our program, we also have the second link we can also share you later. Well, we have about, we started since 2007, our program, and currently we have around 1,000 plus technology partners, over 27,000 product verifications, and probably over 20 lakh online catalog page views. Well, moving on to start, to give you an overview of ExtraHop. Well, ExtraHop being a leader in wire data analytics, they have hundreds of enterprise customers, including some of the familiar names like Morgan Stanley, Nike, Expedia, covering all the industry verticals. They've been in partnership with Citrix Ready for over five years now, providing joint solution to IT operations with powerful performance monitoring solution for virtualized deployments, taking full advantage of the ICA protocol specification. So today we are here to learn and see how ExtraHop via data analytics expand your visibility within Citrix environment and beyond. This is a chance to gain your real world insights that Citrix customers benefited using ExtraHop. So it's integrated with Citrix NetScaler to offer a new approach to monitoring performance on Zen Desktop and Zen App that is completely passive and requires no agents on servers or client devices. Well, I'll be rolling the dice to our first speaker now, but before that, please note, if you have any questions during the webinar, please use the question panel on the right-hand side, and we will take your questions at the end of the presentation in our Q&A session. All right. Please welcome our first speaker, Eric Thomas. Hi, Eric. I welcome you to this technical webinar series, and over to you. Hi, Sagnik. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, thank you to all of our attendees for joining us today. Very glad to, to have you with us. Um, just to introduce myself a little bit, uh, I've been with ExtraHop for about four years. Prior to that, I um, spent my career in uh, operations in IT, a variety of um, roles, large companies, small companies, enterprise, startups, uh, about 20 years of experience in the IT industry. So. Um, I've, I've uh, felt the pain of IT operations firsthand, and uh, I've also you know, been a, a first-party witness to a lot of the dramatic changes in the IT landscape um, over the last few years, seeing how that's affected um, you know, organizations' ability to manage their environments and, uh, and ultimately their businesses. And you know, the main challenge that, that I've noticed over the last few years is that um, the evolution of technology, the evolution of application architectures, infrastructure components, um, you know, the, the, the sort of scaling factors of, of port density and, you know, uh, core density, they're accelerating faster than management software or, or you know, management utilities um, can keep up with. So visibility into IT environments is lagging behind the, the uh, sort of progress and innovation in those environments themselves. You know, and, and that's due to things like agile methodologies, uh, component-driven architectures, service-oriented architectures, and you know, new layers of, of technical abstraction like virtual desktops and, um, and software-defined networks, that type of thing. And you know, the, the result there has been um, essentially negative impacts to end users, negative impacts to businesses. 
um, everything from you know, applications that are sporadically available, that, that slow down, that are unpredictable in terms of performance, all the way to you know, information security events, data breaches and, and security exposure. And, and this problem isn't improving. It's, it's really only getting worse. And it's getting worse as environments get more complex, um, as scale increases by orders of magnitude, and you know, new sort of flexible implementation architectures lead to an unprecedented degree of dynamism in, uh, in IT environments. And you know, at this point, IT organizations are having a hard time just managing the technology let alone supporting the business with business analytics, you know, user data, commercial drivers, all that is a, a, a long way off. And in terms of how IT organizations kind of gather data about their environments, they've built their tool chains sort of organically. So, you know, they've looked at infrastructure monitoring and, and hardware health and said, okay, well, we need a, a hardware health platform. And now, you know, we want to manage the network, so we need packet capture. We need a tool for the database. We need a tool for, for VPM and, and you know, SNMP collection, all these different things, which means that you know, a lot of organizations, the vast majority of them, essentially have a point tool for each component, each piece of technology. And an application isn't just a collection of parts. right? It needs to be treated as a coherent whole. Um, the way that visibility and, and troubleshooting works today is when there's a problem or when there's a need for visibility, every team, every tool owner looks at you know, their particular monitoring tool and you get into kind of a battle of the tools, right? Everybody's measuring everything a, a slightly different way and you, know, you have to sort of argue about whose data is better than whose data before you can get to any meaningful conversation about what's happening in the environment. So, the next generation of this, the next step in the evolution of IT visibility is a strategic approach to managing IT environments and an architecture to support that strategy. You may have heard about an emerging market called uh, IT operations analytics. ExtraHop believes that IT operations analytics is built fundamentally out of four sources of data Three of them are fairly well established you know, in the marketplace and have been for, for years um, because they're fairly simple problems to solve. And, and these are things like you know, synthetic monitoring from different geographic locations, agent data for you know, measuring common language runtimes, Java virtual machines, machine data, you know, think uh, log collection, you know, things like Splunk, uh, Elasticsearch, that type of thing. What ExtraHop brings to the table is a new type of data, a new way to understand what's happening in an IT environment that we call wire data. So what is wire data and, and how does ExtraHop deliver it? First things first, what does ExtraHop do? ExtraHop is a passive platform for observing the entire application delivery chain from top to bottom, meaning everything happening in the data center, every transaction leaving the data center to go back to an end user. ExtraHop is out of band. We take a, a copy of all of the traffic in the data center and every end user transaction. We take that copy, we reconstruct what happened with every transaction across the board in real time. And once we've made that reconstruction, we can extract meaningful technical profiling data meaning timing of transactions, you know, when transactions were successful or failed. When they failed or when they were maybe slow, where were the delays? Was it the network? Was it the database, the storage tier? We're taking this kind of inside out view. We're observing the totality of the application from the outside. The beauty of this approach is that we're not looking at the application as a collection of you know, moving parts. The application to us is everything that drives a user experience, everything that moves data from one place to another, everything that you know, fulfills the purpose of that application. You know, applications are there for a reason, to deliver business value, to deliver customer experiences. 
We include all of that in our analysis, from the very end user sitting at a virtual desktop, what does their interaction with the application look like, how long are logins taking, how long are application loads taking, you know, at a very granular level, what are kind of the pieces of that user's behavior that are adding up to a total user experience. We then take that all the way back to the data center to measure the network, measure you know, IIS or Apache, the web tier, all of these different components, and we measure them all in the same way. We have a unified methodology, which means that when you look at the performance of all these different components, you don't have to ask yourself, well, how is this measured, you know, whose data is right, because we're treating it all as a, as a cohesive whole. ExtraHop is the only complete platform for wire data to, you know, take raw packets off the wire, turn them into insights about how transactions are operating, and ultimately how a business is performing. We reconstruct all of those transactions and the number of dimensions of information we can extract is, is almost limitless. You know, we, from a, a business perspective, we're talking about you know, the individual products that customers are buying, the you know, customers themselves, what's their buying profile, who are they, you know, are they loyalty and rewards customers, are they healthcare professionals, you know, how is a physician's um, experience with electronic medical records different from maybe a nurse practitioner. From an application perspective, we're looking at sessions as users make their way through a user experience. You know, what, in what order are they accessing pieces of the application? How well are those performing from a relative perspective? We can apply this visibility to information security. When you're watching every single transaction in the data center in real time, you can watch for anomalous behavior, things that don't fit you know, your understanding of, of how an application should operate. So we can pull a lot of different interesting insights from, from wire data, and the best part about it is that it's observed. We, we see it happening on the wire, you know, as opposed to a server reporting its own health, for example, or reporting an event. That's only as good as that reporting. It's, uh, it's sort of like, you know, talking to a small child, right? If a, if a small child comes to you and says, it hurts, well, you know that it hurts, but what hurts? Then again, if you watch that child fall over and, and skin his knee, you know for a fact that he fell over and, and skinned his knee. We're taking that outside in observed approach and making definitive conclusions, because if we saw it on the wire, it definitely happened. Wire data is extremely rich because uh, you know, we're not just looking at what a developer decided to record, we're looking at the actual activity of users and application components. And maybe the best part is, wire data is already there. You just need a way to harness it. These transactions are already traversing the network. If you can capture them as they're in motion, not after the fact, you can obtain meaningful business insight, meaningful technical insight in real time. So we'd like to uh, show you a little bit about how we do this in, in real terms. And to do that, we have John Smith. Uh, John Smith has been active in the Citrix ecosystem for quite a long time. Um, one of a handful of Citrix technology professionals in the world. He is the maintainer of wiredata.net, which is a very popular blog that I urge you to check out. Uh, talking about all things Citrix as it relates to wire data. So, uh, John, welcome. Very glad to have you presenting with us here today. And uh, I'm going to ask you to take it away. Thanks. So, my name is John Smith. Well, I actually work for Eric. Um, I am in the solutions architecture team. And hold on, let me get my screen shared here. So, what I'm going to do is a walkthrough of our latest Citrix bundle. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what went into the Citrix bundle. So um, as Eric said, I've been a Citrix engineer for some time. I've been primarily focused uh, in the Citrix space at least for about 15 years. I've only been a vendor for about a year and a half. 
uh, for the first 18 years of my career, I was pretty much basically you. I was a, you know, a guy in a cubicle, you know, trying to trying to keep things up and running and working. So, I want to talk a little bit today about the Citrix bundle. What the Citrix bundle is, is it is a kind of a culmination of what I call 15 years of getting deep with the Citrix stick, right? Basically, 15 years of my experience put into a bundle and, and made available and. Basically, it's a, a collection of metrics that I would have liked to have had um, over over the last 15 years that really would have saved me some time and, and saved me a lot of headaches, you know, uh, throughout my career. So, um, so within that, I'm going to cover some dashboards and also going to cover how we can kind of drill in a little bit further in, into uh, into the actual troubleshooting itself. So, first, what you're looking at is just a series of dashboards that we've created. Essentially, we are taking the baton from HDX here, um, and we're adding some intelligence around the ICA protocol. And what you're looking at here in our launch information, you're seeing the number of um, normal launches, slow launches, and the combination of shared uh, launches and, and regular launches. We also use our trigger technology to calculate the number of slow uh, launches. So what we've done is we've set our it's a rate. Let me just fix that. So, We've set our trigger so that any launch that takes longer than 30 seconds, we want to account for that. So one of the things that we do that kind of separates us from other vendors is that we have a technology called trigger. And we're able to set conditions in a trigger. And if those conditions are met, we're able to report on them. In this case, we've said any launch that takes longer than 30 seconds, we want to account for it. We can include things like username, you know, we can include application. So we can give you slow launches, in this case, by user ID. We can also give you slow launches by uh, CIDR block, by application, by server, that type of information. And so as you go on down, you can see here, we, you can, we can give you your launches by server. Here we have your launches by location. This is one of my favorite metrics to gather, and that's metrics by CIDR block. A lot of Citrix engineers, or a lot of enterprises for that matter, will sort of geospatially organize their enterprise based on CIDR blocks. So what we've done is we've written a trigger to allocate uh, metrics by, or account to account for metrics by CIDR block. And, and we put up kind of a friendly lookup table for some of the branches, and here we also can give you just a basic subnet. I've had experiences where, let's say, an MDF is over, is, is getting, to, or a switch inside an MDF is overheating. A lot of times the, the escalation is fetching. You don't really, the, the help desk doesn't notice that they're all coming from the same CIDR block, but you may notice things like uh, latency or slow launches, that type of thing from, from a specific CIDR block. That could be a condition of, of a, 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 an issue within that geographical region, not within your data center. And again, we, go, we can get your launches by user, launches by application, and we have a, you know, basically your, your very rich um, graphical, you know, representation of your environment. Other things we're able to gain insight into is the ICA channel. So because we've licensed the ICA protocol, we have access to the ICA spec, we're able to get quite a bit of information about the Citrix ICA channel. I've had instances as a Citrix engineer, especially when you publish web applications, and then the user won't realize that that's the Citrix application, they go to Netflix, they go to Hulu, and what we've actually had is situations where, in particular in ZenApp, where they can affect everyone's experience, someone goes online and watches a movie, um, and that's actually happened to me, and, and we would be able to see a spike in, in the audio channel, right, you would see, or a spike in the uh, multimedia channel, something like that. Other things I've seen uh, in the field, I've seen four gigabits of clipboard data. Uh, the customer was not very happy, I'm not sure what happened with that. But, but what I want to drive home is we can give you, and again, this is with no agent, we can give you visibility into these ICA channels so that you can audit those channels and kind of see what's going on. And then the ZenApp world, which is still a, a very, very big, um, probably still a bit of the majority of the Citrix ICA sessions, the channel information um, and, and the multi-user environment, you really need access to the channel information because it can impact the other users. And as you can see here, um, you can see your audio abusers, like our Netflix user, or I, we used to have a guy who liked to print to a big plotter, um, and we would see a huge spike in printing traffic. 
Another scenario, it's not on this particular one, but I used to support SAS users. And even though I published SAS, the, the developers had their macros locally and they wanted to use their local SAS. And they would grab these three and four gig data sets and drag them over what we had called FTP over ICA. The network team would want to know what the heck we're doing. And, and so this would have actually been handy because I would have had visibility into that client drive. You know, I would have saw those files getting copied over. One of the things we do at, with wire data and with extra hop is we monitor the, the components. And an interesting uh, white paper that Doug Brown put out in conjunction with EG Innovation, but Doug Brown put out a white paper where they actually stated 65% uh, of their issues are actually not related to Citrix. Citrix is many things, but, but as is evidenced by that, I've always said 70% of my troubleshooting is actually something not related to Citrix. So what we're looking at here is some of the components that go into your Citrix environment. Here we're looking at the XML broker performance. We've, we've actually tapped into the XML payload between the XML broker and the web interface server, and we report on the performance of that. And everyone knows the XML broker can be kind of a canary in the coal mine. It can be an indication that, that Active Directory is slow. You'll get complaints about application launches being slow, or all of the applications aren't there, something like that. So we monitor that component. We monitor DNS um, as well. Um, I've had environments where um, Prior to extra hop, I had unwittingly had over 80% DNS failure, right? And so extra hop kind of showed some shown some light on what are some of the operational blind spots within your environment. Everyone knows in in a in the client server world, DNS um, can really wreck a distributed application. In the legacy world, like there is in healthcare, where we still have some legacy applications, and we'll cover it a little bit in the app containers. But PTR records, reverse lookups matter. And this can this this the product is able to kind of point out those PTR lookup failures that you're having. We're also on the right, you're seeing the overall DNS performance. Um, if you're in the enterprise, you're hopefully not seeing any uh, you know uh, internet DNS servers in here, but you can kind of see the performance of your specific DNS servers. So if you have an AD controller that's overworked and it's also doing DNS you might see some performance issues within it. But we're basically able to look at the DNS performance as well. Again, that's something that I was only able to see once I got access to wire data. And next we're looking at your LDAP uh, processing. Again, Active Directory is a big part of, of your infrastructure. And poor performance within Active Directory can negatively impact your environment. Another problem area for Citrix uh, deployments can be latency. Here we've actually graphed the latency. Here's the medium latency, the lowest 26th percentile, and the highest 95th percentile, kind of a poor man's self curve there. But another thing we're able to do, again, with latency, if you notice here, we've once again used our trigger technology to set a threshold. My experience um, is that Citrix latency that exceeds 300 milliseconds consistently normally results in excessive type ahead delays and user satisfaction is, uh, uh, issues. So what we've done is we've set conditions in a trigger to account for any user that has latency of over 300 milliseconds. Again, it's great um, that we have monitoring tools and we're able to see things. One of the ways that we separate ourselves from our competitors is that we do give you visibility into those performance metrics, but we can also weed out the 99% that are problematic so that you can focus your attention on, on the 1% that are having issues. And here we basically we see a user here, Alex M. We see the client IP they're coming from, the server they're on, and the application they were using. This is actually pretty valuable. So now you can see the individual users. You might be able to correlate if they're coming from a specific area. More importantly, this can some of the metrics that we gather and part of the um, when we're onboarding a customer with the platform, we, depending on the operational maturity, we can equip your first responders with better data so that things aren't escalated so quickly. One of the challenges with Citrix is that issues go from level one to level three. There's never really a desktop support person that can come along and see what's going on. So the challenge there is that things go from an inexpensive resource to what is in most cases a six-figure resource dealing with an end user issue. Now, if you look here and you see an IP address that's not on your corporate network or if it's behind the net scalar subnet IP and they have high latency, chances are, my experience, 99.9% .9 of the time, 
you're not going to be able to fix that for that end user, right? They need to go to a different coffee shop, figure figure out what's wrong with their home wireless network. But it can kind of give this it, it, in the hands, or if you can empower your first responders with this information, they may be able to avoid escalating it improperly and maybe ask the user, hey, can you can you relocate? Can you try another network? Something like that. But here's again an example of our of our trigger technology where we set a threshold. Likewise, once again, here we have our latency by side of law. I know for a lot of larger Citrix environments, especially retail banking, they'll be using Citrix and they'll have remote or satellite offices. You know, let's say we have the DC office uh, here and we see that they have 126 milliseconds. Let's say I have a MPLS cloud and I have an SLA of 20 milliseconds, right? I have a, kind of some first-hand visibility in the performance, at least initially, the performance of that link. Um, also, here you can see as well if this was, let's say one of these was part of your switched infrastructure, right? Here, if this subnet were part of my switched infrastructure, I would not expect to see these two digits there. I would expect to see single digits or zero for that matter. We're also providing visibility into latency by server IP. In addition to that, we can give you the overall latency by user as well as the uh, latency by application. And we graph that down below here. And this is all, and, and I apologize, we have somewhat of a, a limited data set. Obviously, I can't show customer data here. So I do apologize for a little bit of a limited data set. But this can all be customized. One of the things I also like about the platform is that I, I know a lot of products will deliver a rich dashboard. And we can deliver the rich dashboard experience as well. But other things that we can do, um, I'm looking for something with some text here. Um, we can, these dashboards are all editable. So you could actually put a text box in one of these. Uh, let me see if I have an example of that. Um, let's see here. here. Um, well, I'll just open one up here. So I can actually put a text box. Where this can be valuable is if you have operations staff um, that, that needs to uh, that uh, you want to put some information, let's say you want to put your your um, on-call rotation, something like that. All of these dashboards are actually completely editable. Um, here's, here's an example. So here we have some information about ICA launches. You could actually put your run book in your dashboard. This is all editable. So while we can deliver any number of metrics to you within your dashboard, we can also give you a blank, basically an empty canvas, and you can paint your own operational masterpiece in there. So while we have a great dashboard technology, very rich experience, it's all totally editable and totally customizable for your environment. This is all out of the box. You won't have to write any of this, but if you want to customize them, you can certainly do it. I want to drill into the app containers. So the dashboards, again, a lot of people have dashboards. That's all well and good. Um, but in addition to that, we have the ability to drill into what's called an app container. So within the tr trigger infrastructure, we've actually built an app container. So while the dashboards are good for um, high-level visibility, we can actually deliver some better visibility with our app container. And what you're looking at here, or, or I was going to what sold me on extra hop wasn't just the rich visibility into the ICA protocol. What sold me on extra hop was also, or the really the, the 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 real zinger at the end was the visibility into downstream transactions. So what you're looking at here, we have a couple of custom web pages, but you're looking at all of the transactions that have sourced from your Citrix environment. Now, why this is important, let's say I'm publishing PeopleSoft or I have a web application that's slow. We can actually give you real-time visibility into those downstream transactions that occur. And so here we can look at your, your performance of the web server, of the initial URI. Um, if you have a slow URI and people are calling about, uh, about a, the slowness, unfortunately, if someone calls and says, I'm getting an HTTP 500 error, and they launched the browser in Citrix, that's going to be escalated as a Citrix issue. Part of our play as Citrix administrators is that we have to spend a lot of time doing someone else's job. And over the years, I've kind of just come to accept that. What ExtraHop gave me when I was a customer 
with visibility into those downstream transactions and the ability to see those downstream transactions. And so here we can actually see visibility into the database. Uh, one customer had a slow database issue. Uh, they had added spindles. They did all the things you do, right, when you have slowness. They added spindles. They added memory. They got new hardware. We were able to look and see a particular table was running at 20 milliseconds. Suddenly, the uh, it started um, the transactions were went from 20 milliseconds to 700 milliseconds. Well, if a stored procedure or a query is run millions of times a day, that can have a severe impact on the overall performance. Well, what it ended up being was a corrupt index. Well, until they had had visibility into the downstream SQL queries or the downstream stored procedure performance, they never really could tell that. And so what you have is people complaining about slowness. The first place they look is the network. They look at, well, first it goes to Citrix. And you start looking at the servers and the downstream performance. That would have taken a really long time to troubleshoot without, without, uh, without extra hop. And so that visibility into downstream transactions, if you have a tiered application where um, you make a, an API call or a SOAP call, we can provide visibility into the performance of that SOAP call. But in, then if there's another step where that web tier makes a database call, we can provide visibility into that database call. One of the things that a lot of you probably have been to Edge Site under the hood. I was a big fan of Edge Site. And I remember asking other teams of the apps I hosted, hey, we need to put Edge Site for endpoints on your database server. Hey, we need to put Edge Site for endpoints on your file server, on your web server. Well, that's not a real easy scenario. There are you know, political and operational moving parts there that have to happen. A, D, a DBA is probably going to tell you you're not going to install that agent on my server that I'm responsible for. One of the benefits of having a completely agentless system is that we're, you're able to get visibility. We're able to provide visibility into downstream transactions without asking any of those other teams that are outside of your political you know, infrastructure without having to ask them to install an agent or ask, having to ask them to do anything. I would say next to Citrix, DBAs are our biggest advocates. So and as we work through here, um, I'll go real quickly, and I'm about to wrap up. Also, I would point out here on the overview, here we're looking at the individual tiers within this Citrix environment. And, and again, I apologize for the limited data set. If you've had IBM MQ or MSMQ, if you had a lot of SIFs, well, we have NAS here, or storage. If you had um, you know, any number of the protocols that we have fluency into, we can basically get visibility across the tiers that we're supporting. Again, I want to, uh, as you're all painfully, unfortunately, aware, if there's a problem within any one of these tiers, they will be the issue will be es es escalated as a Citrix problem. And so here I see a spike in database errors. Here I, I can map my DNS or my web errors or NAS errors. Here's my, here maybe I had some HTTP 500 errors there. But I'm able to kind of get a holistic view really quickly of the performance here of, of my entire holistic environment. And then as we come down below, I can have my, see my performance. So here, uh, database looks good, DNS looks good, uh, storage looks okay, but then all of a sudden my web tier just went crazy. This is, these are some of the things that take hours and hours of, of some really sometimes heated war room calls where we're able to kind of provide right away, here's where your problem is, it's at the web tier. This is a level of visibility that I had really never had before. Um, other things we can provide visibility into, if you look here, um, we've made some custom, custom pages, and you can drill into here and see kind of users that have got high latency. Again, this is the latency uh, graph that you had looked at, looked at before. Um, the other thing I like that would have saved me quite a bit of time, I'm going to go into the detail link. If we look here, we actually see a user that has traversed that 300 millisecond uh, kind of Rubicon, right, that 300 millisecond threshold. And actually, they had a number of, of instances of it. They had a really hard time, right? 300 milliseconds is, is problematic. In addition to seeing some intel around the user session here, I also see the server. Now, this is something when you're supporting a lot of teleworkers, I see the server line was in use. If I type line in here, 
I've now filtered out all non-line servers. So what you can do here is you can take a look and see, okay, I understand Alex M had issues, had poor performance, and it was due to the latency. However, 29 other users had acceptable latency. These are some of the things that plague Citrix teams where they spend hours and hours troubleshooting things that are not within their purview and that they're not able to fix. In a scenario like this, where we had one user that had a problem, but everyone else didn't have a problem, I would probably tell them they need to escalate it to the local on-premise support people. You know, oftentimes you'll see a wireless access point will die, no one will know it, the person was 50 feet before, now they're 300 feet from an access point, performance starts to degrade, nobody really sees it, but you can come in here and kind of see, hey, everyone else on that server doesn't have any problem. We can give you the same intel around your subnet, we can give you the same intel around it with individual servers or individual, um, individual uh, users as well. So this is kind of a scenario where you can leverage wire data to take a holistic look at your environment and be able to save yourself some time and, and kind, of, kind of not spend your time doing someone else's work. And I don't see them as trying to get out of work as I see getting the issue forwarded over to the proper person sooner versus having the Citrix team kind of spend a lot of time proving it's not them and then routing it to the right group. Uh, again, uh, in conclusion, I want to say what I really liked about the platform, in addition, to, in addition to its very rich ICA metrics that we can get and the agentless nature of it, is that I'm able to see performance of the downstream transactions. And as you saw here, everything we've done with Citrix, we can do this, everything we've done here, we can do with any practice in your enterprise. One of our sound bites is that we kind of serve the org, not the org chart. While server teams by their tools, network teams by their tools, security teams by their tools, developers by their tools, the wire data that we're grabbing and that we're harvesting and making available and building intelligence around has value to your entire organization. And what we've done here with Citrix, we can do for any discipline and any practice that you have within your enterprise. And the last slide, I have one. I only have one slide, so I got lucky. Um, and hopefully everyone can see that. So um, if you have any questions, obviously um, I'm on Twitter. If you Google John Smith Citrix, ironically there was another very senior Citrix guy named John Smith. Um, but um, if you Google John Smith Citrix, you should be able to find your John Smith Extra Hop. Or uh, next steps, you can contact our sales team. We have a free demo that you can download and test with, and um, we have a Twitter hashtag there. So uh, I want to, uh, to go ahead and hand it back to Citrix, or if there are any questions. Yes, thank you so much, John and Eric. That was a beautiful demo and a wonderful presentation. And now let's move on to question and answer session. We got a few questions here and I'll be shouting out. Eric and John, feel free to step in and answer. Uh, so how is ExtraHop deployed in a Citrix environment? So the way we deploy ExtraHop is that, as Eric stated earlier, we, we work off of a network span. So you'll install nothing on any of your systems. Uh, with that span, sometimes we work with a span aggregator um, or we'll work directly off, off of the switch. But we won't install anything on any of your servers. Um, in addition to that, we are truly agentless. We're not going to do any WMI mining. We're not going to do any um, SNMP locking. No one's going to interrogate your systems. So we basically set usually in the, um, almost always in the server segment, and we span the VLANs that the Citrix environment is supporting, but we can also span other VLANs that, that Citrix is, uh, within, the, within the data center that Citrix is also consuming. Remember, Citrix is essentially a glorified client. There's an ICA client to the Citrix server, but then the Citrix server is itself a client. So we sit in the network, and we work off of a span or a tap, and from there, we observe traffic as it comes by, and we rebuild the, the uh, layer seven flows, and we put our trigger intelligence around those flows. Uh, Eric, do you have anything to add? I, no, I, I think you, you, you pretty much captured it. My only other comment is, you know, we can also um, leverage existing network tap infrastructure uh, to deploy ExtraHop, and, and we have a couple of other 
form factors um, for, for hybrid cloud deployments. Don't need to go into the details, but you know, the, the short version is that we can accommodate pretty much any technology environment while maintaining a, uh, a passive approach. Yep. Yeah, and that includes VR scans for virtual environments. Exactly. Thank you, Eric. Okay, next question. Okay. Uh, the next question is, uh, what are the advantages of a cross-tire visibility? Well, um, cross-tier visibility um, is, it gives you kind of that holistic view in the Citrix world. Again, um, in the Citrix world, we publish applications, and this is what I've done for, for, for a long time. I publish an app, and then I never really ask questions about who the app talks to and what exactly is the infrastructure, at least not for a long time until I got a little wiser. The visibility into those tiers um, is paramount because Slowness within those tiers will get escalated to your team, and everyone, every Citrix engineer on the call understands this. If there's a three-tiered application, a web browser, a, a web front end, and um, a back end database, slowness anywhere within those tiers will be escalated as a Citrix issue, I would say 100% of the time. The problem is with the service desk here at Citrix it immediately gets escalated to the Citrix team. So that visibility into the cross tiers sort of gives you visibility into those critical control points, right? Um, and, and you can kind of see that visibility, you know, what things can derail your application? Well, a slow web server, a DNS failure, um, a slow SIS share, um, a, a corrupt, <laughs> certainly a corrupt database can back. Um, so visibility into those tiers um, is, is, is the advantage there is that everything is tiered now. With the advent of APIs now, um, you know, you can actually purchase and consume APIs as a service now, right, especially in healthcare. The tiered visibility will provide accountability and it will it'll provide, um, you know, a little bit faster resolution um, when, when you're dealing with tiered systems, especially, you know, the, the, the application and the infrastructure within the application is complex, the escalation protocol is not. It goes directly to the Citrix team. We give you that downstream visibility without having to ask that other team to install an agent. Good question. Cool. Uh, the next question is especially to John, <laughs> I have to ask. So an attendee is asking, will I get to work with John if we buy extra hop? Um, um, well, I, 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 you would have to ask Eric, um, but um, we have a number of, of excellent Citrix resources at ExtraHop. Um, if you purchase ExtraHop and you say, I, I want to work with John, I'm sure we could work something out. But I, I would advise we have uh, Ken Abram, who's an excellent Citrix resource. And we have some, uh, within the Solutions Architecture team, some very, very experienced Citrix resources. Um, but um, I'm happy to get involved with, with anyone who, who, uh, who uh, wants to purchase it, but uh, ultimately uh, Eric and, and Walter would have to answer that question. Thank you. Yeah, so this is Eric. We have uh, a very uh, deep bench of, of talent within kind of the Citrix ecosystem, um, networking, scaled out web apps, uh, you know, you name it. If it's a modern technology, we have rock stars like John to support it. Um, and as far as John specifically, you know, uh, first off, there's, there's absolutely an opportunity to work with John. Um, and secondly, you know, my uh, my contact information will be provided if you want to try to bribe me into making John available for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The next question is, what is the best way to learn more about the extra hop solution? Um, well, um, the the second bullet point there on the slide, I would doubt. So we have a free discovery edition. Um, it, it is somewhat limited, but um, if you want to download it and use it, it's a VM. It works with VMware Workstation. I've run it on VMware Workstation. Um, that's a great way to learn. And, and, the, and in the process of, of downloading the demo, um, you'll be set up with our forums, uh, and you'll get access to some documentation and training material. And so that's a great way to learn. Um, it, for those of you, um, you know, what we find is that Citrix engineers do very well with extra ha. Huh? Um, Citrix engineers have, in the last five, six years, have, have had to have expose themselves to programming, right? A lot of them have a lot of experience with PowerShell. PowerShell has actually you know, become very prevalent within the Citrix community. And, and our platform, you know, I mean, when I first started, 
I would edit Carl Webster's or, or, or Brian, Brandon Shell's PowerShell scripts and make them my own. And I was, you know, a de facto PowerShell programmer. You can do the same thing with us. We have same triggers that you can leverage, and you can go in and edit those triggers in, in a manner. And it, 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 what you would do with our trigger technology isn't any different than, than or any, certainly any more difficult than what you've already been doing with PowerShell up to date. Um, so the best way to learn would be to uh, absolutely download the demo. And um, you know, um, I, if you, I've got a YouTube channel for WireData.net, and also the ExtraHop YouTube channel has just an absolute myriad of training, including um, uh, someone named uh, Dan Greer does some training on the Discovery Edition as well. Or just shoot me an email and ask me. <laughs> so, yeah. Great. Uh, the next question, let me pick one. Uh, okay, this one. How does ExtraHop's usage of ICA protocol differ from other products? Um, well, we 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 um, we we have a license to the spec, um, and we are able to collect the, uh, the same number of metrics. Where we differ is that you don't install anything, right? You we work from a network cap or a network span, and so. You know, you'll never have to worry about. You know, will it work with Windows 10? Will it, you know, will it work? Do you have a Unix agent? The only prerequisite for ExtraHop is an IP address. If it has an IP address and it talks to something else with an IP address, we'll see it and we'll be able to provide visibility into it. So where we differ from a lot of our other from other um, vendors is that you don't install anything, right? You, you're, you can basically, you know, we'll sit back and we'll passively observe it. We also um, we also provide a little bit more intelligence around the ICA protocol with our trigger technology. Um, what I found, and, and, and one of the things, um, uh, one of the things I didn't like about a lot of tools um, is the inability to kind of customize the views that I get or customize the data. An example would be what we do when we break up the latency in CIDR blocks, right? So we actually provide the ability to kind of build some intelligence around the ICA metrics. So while we, we can collect a, a, a vast amount of data within the ICA protocol and we do it agentlessly, the other way we differ is that we also allow you to build some intelligence around what you're collecting in terms of, hey, I only want to see, you know, over 200 milliseconds late, say, um, hey, um, you know, the, um, you know, we've hired a new CIO and I want to write a custom trigger that monitors that CIO's experience for everything that they do. That's the scenario. You could actually do that, right? You could monitor that that CIO's client IP as they traverse your entire network. And those are some of the things how we're a little bit different than the other products. Um, the intelligence around it, and and there's absolutely no agent installation or in no interrogation of your downstream system. Brilliant. Uh, well, the next qu I'm getting a theme out here. Like, could you address how different is it from HDX Insight, Extra Hub? Um, well, as I said before, uh, we we take the baton from HDX Insight. So HDX Insight provides um, very good. So it's a great visibility uh, between the net stealer and the end user, and they're able to provide you know visibility around you know uh, latency. Um, performance of, of you know individual websites as well. So HDX Insight has actually a very rich uh, web monitoring um, capabilities as well. So HDX Insight is, is focused between the client and, and the net scaler. And as I stated, we take the baton from from HDX Insight and we provide a um, visibility downstream to the to the to those downstream transactions that take up according and and my battle cry has been seventy percent. But according to the Doug Brown uh, white paper that he produced, you know, he, he, the, those those things that take up 65% of people's time, we, we provide visibility into those downstream um, uh, transactions that occur outside of ICA. But so we're big fans of HDX and say it was a great innovation. It does a great job of, of providing that visibility between the client and the next Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, is okay. There's another one here. Is the Citrix bundle different from the ICA module licensing? John, uh, I'll take this one if you don't mind. Um, yep. So the uh, the ICA module, um, you know, if you uh, if you didn't catch it during the presentation, is what enables us to um, not only license the ICA protocol but also analyze it in real time on the wire for our customers um, that have 
purchased our, our Citrix monitoring and visibility solution. We make the Citrix bundle available um, free of charge as a value added uh, component to our ICA analysis. Um, you know, extra hop customers can log into our customer forums. We have a very active forum community um, for our customers and download not just the Citrix bundle, but other uh, bundles for supporting other use cases, things like, um, you know, anything healthcare, electronic medical records, that sort of thing, information security, compliance. Um, so, you know, short answer to the question, um, once you have our Citrix visibility in place, the Citrix bundle comes along with that for free. Great. Next question is, uh, great to see real-time data. Are there also daily, weekly, monthly reports which can be generated? Want to take this one? Yeah, so we can, um, we, it is real-time data, and we can also do daily, weekly, and monthly. We, we mm -hmm. also, I didn't cover it, um, which I should have in, in there. So we, can, we guarantee 30 days of look back. So we understand that that also one of the challenges within Citrix is that that things are escalated after the fact sometimes, and so we give you the ability to look back in time, and we do have reporting on a on on a on a you know hourly, daily, and and uh, weekly and monthly. We can provide you know we have a full reporting suite as well as an alerting suite um, that that accompanies the product. So we, there's a, there's a very strong business intelligence um, makeup within the platform and um, and reporting, alerting, um, and data mining is, are, are all part of that, yes. And, and just to be clear on the uh, historical look back and data retention, um, the, the 30 days that uh, John mentioned is the absolute minimum amount of look back that will be stored on a single extra hop node at full line rate. So if we have a 40 gigabit appliance, that's our, you know, our EH9100, our flagship appliance, and it's ingesting 40 gigabit sustained line rate will keep at least 30 days of uh, historical data on that appliance itself. But typically, our customers will also leverage our extended data store capability, attach an extra hop to a NAS device to enable essentially, you know, infinite historical look back or, or permanent data retention of all of the metrics that, that extra hop gathers. Very well addressed. Thanks, guys. Uh, there's another one here. Uh, does the bundle distinguish between ICA and FMA, or does ICA combine with both protocols? Um, we will we'll see both protocols, both IMA and FMA. So, in fact, the, this particular bundle is, is centered around um, 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 I, IMA infrastructure. But we do, so we do have some, uh, we don't have a VDI lab and, and we're not allowed to use customer data, but we've done some work around the new uh, Zen app and Zen desktop 7.x uh, to provide visibility into the new FMA architecture. Uh, we're able to see things like, you know, registered uh, VDI desktops and, and there's quite a bit of information that, that, that is in the XML and we're able to parse that and provide visibility into it. For this particular sample, like I said, I do apologize, but, you know, I'm, I'm sure everyone understands we can't show customers customer data, but we do um, have some customizations and some custom triggers for the FMA architecture uh, on the new 7.x platform. Good question. Cool. Okay. Next question, how does the partnership with ExtraHop extend the value of the Citrix Director? Citrix Director is sort of a it's sort of a a merger of their their agent data or their 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 system based data. So, um, and and we can provide visibility to the wire. So, desktop director can give you some very valuable metrics on the uh, about the ex individual machines. So, if you look at ExtraHop and wire data as as one of the sources. We provide visibility. We, we're basically interrogating the wire. We're interrogating the transaction. Desktop director can give you a, some metrics around the performance of the individual servers. There is a little bit of overlap with some of the with, with some of the metrics, the different metrics that we gather. The desktop director does an excellent job of providing uh, some some visibility into the actual performance on the individual system, the processes, CPUs, 
that type of information. So desktop directory is, is centered around around the individual servers a little more. We're centered around the wire with the with the transaction um, that we see, but also we can see the tier transactions as well, right? So you know if you have a desktop directory that talks to a SOAP tier, a SOAP tier that talks to writes data to a, a message queue, who then writes data to a database server, we can see all of those all of, all of those critical control points within the within the um, Within the application, and we can and we can provide the ability there, and kind of like as I said, kind of pick up, take the baton from Citrix, both directory and, and in HDX Insights, and kind of take it to the to the next level of ability. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot of questions, but I'll take two more. We're short of time. How will Extra Hub be able to handle the cloud environments like AWS or Azure? Uh, I'll, I'll take this one. So um, the uh, the beauty of of wire data uh, is that you know it's sort of flexible to anywhere that you know packets are found, and given that ExtraHop can automatically discover and automatically classify such a broad variety of types of traffic, um, you know we we can automatically adjust to changes in the underlying sort of virtual infrastructure. And what I mean is. You know, if you have a, uh, a deployment out in a given AWS availability zone, for example, and you know you shift load over to another availability zone, ExtraHop just observes that workload leaving one place and appearing in another. So our, our basic architecture is very well suited to public cloud deployments, um, private cloud, hybrid cloud deployments as well. The way that we actually address that is with a uh, sort of lightweight packet forwarder that we include in our AWS solution. We are actively operating in AWS with our AWS product line across a number of our different customers, and we are actively working with you know, other strategic cloud partners to develop targeted and, and certified solutions for those platforms as well. But you know, regardless of which kind of cloud vendor or platform we're talking about the interoperability between that cloud and a customer's on-premise infrastructure or, or private cloud is completely seamless and, and completely unified. Great, thanks, Eric. Uh, there are some more questions. We are unable to take them due to the time bound. We'll definitely get back to you privately, answering all your questions without fail via email. So please feel free to contact ExtraHop, and ExtraHop will also answer all the questions via email. So. Also, I see many attendees asking about the slides and the recording of this webinar. Well, to answer the question, of course, yes, we will definitely share the recording with all the attendees within a day or two uh, at your registered email ID. So well, with that said, we are about to end today's webinar. I want to take a moment and thank our speakers, Eric, John, and the team from ExtraHop for making this fantastic presentation and sharing their knowledge with us. And last but not the least, I want to thank each one of you who are attending our webinar today in the Citrix Ready Technical Webinar Series. And this concludes our broadcast. Thank you.